Hello, my name is Horkon and welcome back all you fabulous fighting fantasy aficionados for another episode, I believe it is the fourth one, of going into Scorpion Swamp. Um, now this is a very interesting book in that it is a very... Uh, it's, not as, it's not linear at all compared to the other books. You can actually go back and forth and crisscross and all around and go same places the same places twice or three times as many times as you like um which makes it a very different book a very different style and also it makes it a lot harder to map you'd think it was easier to map but if you map it the way that i do which is as a flow chart it looks quite messy but i still think i'll be able to find my way using the map now I had some camera problems here, so I've actually restarted this video, and hopefully the uh, the video will work, and uh, we'll see. But I will also skip the beginning this time of of the uh, story. I'll just tell it really quickly. Um, the protagonist of this story, the uh, the you character, the uh, the player. He is uh, someone who's very interested in Scorpion Swamp, but Scorpion Swamp is a nasty, nasty place. There are lots of uh, monsters. There are scorpions probably as well. Uh, well, actually, we know there are. Um, but also it's impossible to navigate because anyone who goes in there loses their sense of direction almost right away. It's misty. You can't navigate by the stars. A compass doesn't work. And so nobody has mapped it. Nobody knows where everything in there is. And um, the only ones who sort of know what's going on, there are some people known as the Masters, who are uh, um, a group of wizards who don't really work together, but they each have their own sphere of influence. Um, so there's a Master of Spiders, a Master of Insects, I believe, Master of Toads or Frogs, Master of Wolves. And, uh, and they each have their own thing they take care of. Um, but it turns out one day uh, you do um, a completely selfless act of helping someone else who turns out to be a witch, possibly. And she gives you a ring, a magical brass ring, which always lets you know which direction is north. And also it detects evil. So two things uh, that are quite useful to an adventurer such as yourself. Um, and the first thing that springs to mind to do with such a ring once you realize its power is to go and map Scorpion Swamp. And so you travel to the town that's right next to the swamp, um, the name of which I can't remember at the moment. You go into a tavern, you tell people that you're going into the swamp and they try to dissuade you, the usual story. Uh, and you insist and say you're going to do it anyway. Somebody comes in and says, well, you shouldn't just go in just to map the place. It's much better if you've got a quest, some, some purpose besides just mapping. And he suggests, uh, first of all, that you check with the good wizard Selator. And if you immediately decide to go with Selator, then you also gain two lock points. Um, whereas if you want to hear him out, you also get two other options. There's an evil wizard and presumably a neutral one as well. Um, Poom Chakra I think is a neutral one and I can't remember the evil one's name. Now these three wizards uh, represent three different quests that you can try to fulfill inside Scorpion Swamp. So there are actually three different ways of playing this and three different ways of winning. Which makes it quite interesting and quite replayable in a way even though of course once you've mapped it out uh, winning for the second and third time would be a lot easier. Um, and uh, the quest you get from the good wizard Selator is about a plant known as the Antherica. Now, Antherica is a uh, plant that is used in white magic, and it's only used in white magic. And therefore, evil wizards have tried to destroy it, and it was actually thought to be extinct. But it turns out there's certainly a rumour, or maybe it's a certainty, I can't remember which now, that there is one Antherica plant growing inside Scorpion Swamp. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, from um, Selator is to find this plant, pick one berry from it, bring it back to him so he can then breed the plant uh, locally or grow it locally in his own garden, presumably, uh, or somewhere else safe from evil wizards. And so that the berry and its uh, power, uh, whatever it is, which I'm not sure if you actually told, uh, I don't think so, 
uh, can be used for the good of all wizards everywhere. Well, all good wizards everywhere. Um, so that's your mission, and you have chosen to accept it, and you also get six spells. Spells, of course, in uh, Scorpion Swamp work differently to how they do in Citadel of Chaos. They're very similar spells. You don't have a potion, you don't have provisions uh, regaining your stamina. You have spells that can give you stamina, luck, skill, back, um, and some other effects as well. There's fire, there's ice, um, bless, etc., etc. And you're not a spellcaster, but you get these gems that you can use to cast spells. Right, so I've played it for a few times now. I still haven't seen a single berry of Entherica, and I've been almost everywhere. So I think I've sort of... I think there's a corner where I haven't been yet, and it must be there, surely. So I'm going to try and sort of do a beeline for that today and see if I can get the Entherica bush and get back in one piece and therefore uh, succeed in my mission to uh, to find the berry for the good wizard Selator. Right, um, now since I started this already and it froze up on me and it looks like it still is working, I'll just double check my sound is also rolling, so to speak. Because it doesn't roll, it's it's a digital recorder and the camera is not rolling either, but that is the term we use still, even though it's uh, a post analog age for most purposes. All right, so um, so I've got my things ready on my desk and I will just swap to desk view and uh, I don't know if I should do my transition now because I'm not sure if I bumped into my camera and something strange happened last time I did that. Um, so I'm just going to, um, yes, try not to Right, so um, I've got my character sheet, which I've already started writing in because I rolled my abilities earlier and I got 11 skill, 18 stamina, a bit low, 11 luck, so quite good uh, skill and luck. I picked two stamina spells. They each uh, regain you half your stamina. Two fire spells, one ice spell and one bless spell. Um... And that's all you need to get started. And I'll go to paragraph nine, which is uh, right here at, let's see, can we see it here in the beginning? Yes. I'll just make sure I'm properly in shot now. And my lighting is all right. It's a little bit dark, the picture, but I think I can adjust that in post um, if I need to. So I'm going to paragraph Nine. Okay, I got, of course I got also got my pens and my my dice. Need that. Oh, twelve. Nice. Um, and I got a little bit of coke unusually today. Um, had some left over after I had my dinner. I don't usually drink coke, but um, I had some today because I just felt like it, um, and it went really well with the chicken I had for dinner. Anyway, let's get started. You are on the southern edge of Scorpion Swamp, thanks to the brass ring, that's the one that shows you direction. You will always know which way is north, but you must still make a map. You decide to map each path you follow and each clearing you enter, so that you will know which way to go if you return to a clearing. You quickly find a path leading north into the swamp. A huge sign crudely painted on a boulder reads, Stop, Scorpion Swamp, Turn Back. A skull and crossbones completes the grisly picture. Bravely you stride past the warning and enter the swamp. You can see that it would be foolish to step off the path into the muck, so you follow the trail where it leads. Turn to 195. You are in clearing one. Actually, this is no more than the wide spot where three trails meet. The ground is very shaky and wet, and huge insects flit over the pools of water that dot the ground. If you want to step carefully across to another trail, turn to 58. If you would rather just jump over the soft part, turn to 91. Now, jumping requires stamina, um, whereas stepping carefully requires luck. At this point, my stamina is higher than 12, which means I will automatically succeed jumping across. Um, later, if my stamina is lower and I try to do the same thing, I might lose skill. So one has to be a bit careful doing that. So I will jump across and go to paragraph 91. 
Roll two dice. If the result is equal to or less than your stamina, you make the jump. And I'm not going to roll that because my stamina is 18. Um, so that seems a little bit pointless. As much as I like rolling dice, there's no point. Otherwise, you fell short, blah, blah, blah. I don't need that now. You may now leave the clearing. Will you travel west, east, or south? Now, um, the thing is, there aren't that many things that I technically need to get in order to get to my Entherica, I think, because uh, it's very open-ended and um, lots of things going on here that I don't technically need. So I think the easiest way to get there is to go west, 398. You enter a medium-sized clearing containing a small house built of logs. You're in clearing four. If you've been here before, I haven't, etc. Uh, you hear the low growling of a dog. Then you see that it is not a dog, but a wolf watching you from beside the house. The door opens and a big burly man steps out. Another wolf follows him. The man carries a sword and is dressed as a forester. But you know from the silver wolf amulet he wears that he is the master of wolves, so he's one of the wizards. Um, you hail him in a friendly fashion. He answers gruffly, ordering you away. Will you obey and leave, cast a spell, or attack him? Now, I can't see any point attacking him. Um... Uh, and the only spell that I think has an effect here is a friendship spell. Uh, and if you do cast a friendship spell, he will be friendly with you and he will give you um, a little hint of how to get to where you're going. And also he will um, uh, give you a sort of a power magical word that you can use with wolves to make them friendly towards you. Um, I haven't met any other wolves, so I'm still not sure whether that's important or not, but I will just obey and leave in this case, and I will just keep going and go to 314. So, you have two choices. If you go north, turn to 90. If you go east, turn to 195. Now, of course, my map is completely messy now, so I'm just have to see if... Uh, of course, east, that's going back where I came from um, in this case, so I'm going north, obviously. Uh, 90. You have crossed several shallow streams, but now you are faced with a deeper one. This is clearing 34. You see movement in the water below, and you are not sure that you care to wade across. Well, use the ice spell, use the wither spell, or wade across very carefully. I'm going to use the ice spell, and go to 370. And I'll cross that off my list. The ice spell creates a solid bridge, which you can cross easily. You may travel north or south from here. If you go north, turn to 157. If you go south, that's back where I came from. So I'm going north, 157, yes. Um, this is one of those places you keep crossing every, <laughs> regardless of where you're going. The path narrows menacingly. You wonder for a second if you have reached a dead end. Then it becomes wider again. You step into a very small clearing. You are in clearing 18. Uh, and I've not been there before. So you see several unusual trees around you. They are dark green and rather small, with snaky limbs. Suddenly you realise that each limb ends in a sword. And they are moving. You are being attacked by the dreaded sword trees. They are all around you now. If you want to fight them with your own sword, turn to 28. If you want to try a magic spell, turn to 203. Now how was fire against these ones? Well, I think it made a huge difference, you know. Um, actually... I've forgotten about that. I probably should have gone with more stamina uh, spells. Um, fire will reduce their stamina by two. I'll still do that. I'll, st I'll do that. So I'm going to use a spell and go to 203. Um, against these uncanny enemies, you decide to use magic. Will you try fire? Wither. I suppose wither might work better. Growth. And if you use growth, they double in strength or double in stamina. I'm going to use fire and go to 75. You cast a fire spell on the sword trees. They writhe in anger, but are not badly hurt. Turn to 28 and fight, subtracting 2 from the stamina of the sword trees before you start. So we go to 28. And we are fighting our first enemies of the day. 
and they are sword trees. I'll see, let's put my skill and stamina 11, 18, and I'm fighting sword trees with 9, 10 because I've lost two stamina points from the fire. Right. So, just to go through combat as usual, um, your opponent has a skill and a stamina. <clears throat> skill is how good they're at fighting or, or not being injured in battle. Or a combination of those two and the stamina is how many times they can get hit before they die um or how much yeah how much health they got um and first of all you roll two dice for your opponents so this is ooh, 11 that's too high and you add that to their skill so that's a total of 20 that's their attack score i'll do the same for myself I roll 11 as well, which means that I get 22, which is my attack score. And whichever has the lower, whoever has a lower attack score is the one who gets injured. In this case, the trees get injured and they lose two points of stamina. It is also possible to use luck in combat, uh, but every time you test your luck, you lose one luck point. So you have to use it sparingly. But of course, if you're in dire straits and you are close to death, then you might want to use luck points in combat because it's still better than dying. Um, in which case, you can use it when you are doing damage to your opponent. Um, and if you succeed, you do two extra damage. If you fail your luck test, you actually do one less damage. And if you are doing it to prevent damage to yourself, um, you get one less damage if you succeed and you get one more damage I take one more damage if you fail. So, and regardless of whether you succeed or fail a luck roll, it is you always lose one point of luck, so it's harder next time. Um, right, so, and I wrote two, but I was supposed to write eight because I said lose two points and then I write two instead of eight. Right, so second round, and I've got a two skill point advantage, that's how I usually think of it. Uh, so I'm trying to roll two better than my opponent. So. He rolls a six, and then I oh, and then I need to roll four or better. And I roll ten, so he's got six uh, hit points. I like calling it left. He rolls five. I roll five, which means I hit him again. He's down to four hit points. Um, it's done. It's in dragon's term, but I like it. He rolls five. I roll four, so that's still me hitting him. And finally, he rolls six. And I roll a three, so that's not finally, and I get hit two points. He rolls a ten, I roll a three. Oh dear, the tide of the battle is turning. He rolls eight, and I roll eight, and then he is dead. But I lost four health, and I'm down to 14. Right, so I defeat them, and I go to 362. You skillfully wield your mighty sword. The sword trees are no match for your prowess, and soon each reaching limb has been lopped off. You look around the clearing. You find nothing except a few seeds that look as though you, they might have come from the sword trees. You pocket them and go on. Turn to 22. I never know if, if those seeds are going to be useful for anything, but you can certainly pick out a lot of them. Um, anyway, let's see, 22. Even as you pocket the seeds, you see new growth stirring at the base of the trees. You'll leave quickly. When you go north, south, or west. Now, I came from the south, so I'm not going south. But am I going north or... Let's see, 320. This is where my map is completely convoluted. Um, and I think that I'm supposed to go north. Where is west? Where is west? West is down there. So I'm going north. And I go to 320. The path dips slightly downwards and leads into a grassy clearing. This is clearing 29. Um, in the middle of the clearing lies a white creature. At first you think it is a horse. Uh, but then when it turns to face you, you realise that it is a unicorn. It appears to be wounded. Great claw marks score its flank. But it gets to its feet and lowers its horn at you, snorting a challenge. Will you run away, fight it, or cast a spell? I'm going to cast a spell. 
I'm going to drink something before I cast. <clears throat> Which spell will you cast on the unicorn? Friendship, fear, bless, fire, or none? I'm going to cast a bless spell because I know that it will heal its wounds somewhat and it will be friendly to disposed towards me. So I'm going to 381. You do not want to attack the injured unicorn. You have always heard that they are good creatures. You cast the bless spell instead. The creature quivers as the spell strikes it. Um, then it whinnies joyfully. The wounds along its side are almost healed and the unicorn is much stronger. I think I'll move the light a little bit closer. That is, that is a little bit better maybe? Okay. Um, it is still reluctant to approach a human, but it walks over to the side of the clearing and digs at the ground with its horn. You look at the ground where it has been had been digging. There are two magic gems there, like the one Selator gave you. You recognize one is a friendship spell and one is a spell to restore luck. So I get a luck spell. Is this within shot now? Luck and friendship. Okay, that might come useful. You are certain the unicorn can understand you as you thank it and go on your way. Turn to 348. There are four exits. Will you go north, south, east, or west? Now this is where I think I'm going east. Is that not so? Let's see. Uh, was it north again? No, it's not north. East. I think I'm meant to go east now. So I'm going to 10, going east. The knotted trees give way before you and you enter another clearing. This is clearing five. If you have been here before, turn to 142, I haven't, you realize immediately that there has been a battle here. The ground is torn up, blood is splashed over the dank swamp grass and you can see two arrows sticking in a tree not far away. If you examine the clearing to see what you can find, turn to 59. Uh, if you decide to leave as quickly as possible, turn to 227. If you examine it, what do you find? Uh, I don't actually know. I really need to tidy up my map. Uh, I'm going to leave, so 227. There are three paths leading out of the clearing. The one that leads east is somewhat narrower and darker than the others. Will you go north, east or west? So west is where I came from. Um, north, I still haven't been there actually. It looks like east is 388, which I can't see here now. So I'll try to go north in that case, because I don't seem to have been there before. Oh, I have been there before, but oh, hang on. I think I've got something double up now because that is, isn't that over here? 66 there. Okay. So this is actually on the next page. Um, yes. You enter a rather pleasant glade surrounded by gnarled oaks. You are in clearing nine. Leaning against a tree eating lunch is a small, cheerful man in dark clothes. His food is in a picnic basket. He has no visible weapons, except for the knife with which he is cutting his cheese. He notices you standing there and hails you. Good day, fighter. Will you share my meal? 
as he speaks to feel the brass ring grow hot, warning you of evil. You realize that the man is a thief. Will you attack him, ignore him, or accept his invitation and sit down? I know that if you ignore him, he will garrote you from behind and steal everything you've got, which happened to me last time, so I do not want to do that. Um, I don't know what happens if you sit down with him. I will just have to attack him, I think, because I know he's evil. I know he's out to get me. I will not, if I sit down to eat with him, he m might find a way to poison me or drug me or something. So I will attack him. So I go to 267. You hear a hiss of anger and the thief is upon you. He has only a dagger, but he fights viciously. And he's got a very good skill of 10. So let's see. So at the moment I'm at 1114. So that's not a very big uh, lead over his abilities now. So he's got 10, 9. Um, but I do have quite a bit of luck, so I can use that if it starts getting a bit hairy now. So I've only got one skill point advantage. And um, yeah, it also says you may not escape, for the thief is attacking you furiously. So I can't escape from this one. So he rolls a seven, I roll a two. Okay, so that's not a very auspicious beginning. So I'm down to 12 hit points. He rolls a five, I roll a three. Oh dear. I'm down to 10 hit points. He rolls a 7. I roll a 3. 8. He rolls a 7 again. I roll an 8. And maybe I should use luck to try to do extra damage to him because, yeah, that's, it's a bit scary now. Um, so I will roll against 11. And I roll 8, so my luck is down to 10. And I do 2 extra damage to him, so he's down to 5. Okay, he rolls 4. I roll 10. Okay, he's down to 3. He rolls 6. I roll 8. He's down to 1 hit point. And finally, he rolls 10. And I roll 8. So I'm down to six. He rolls four and I roll four and that is a death blow. He's is dead. Um, and I will use a stamina spell to regain half my stamina, round it up. So that means I regain nine. So a nine plus six brings me back to 15 stamina. So I'm at 15 stamina, like so, um, and I turn to 386. The body of the thief lies at your feet. He was not as clever as he thought he was. You examine his pack, the only thing you can find that looks useful is a large red cloak. So I've got, now I've got a red cloak and I suppose I also have some sword tree seeds um, um, red cloak which you may add to your own possessions if you like munching a bit of cheese you took from his picnic basket you continue on your way turn to 179 I suppose you could have had a good meal there and got some stamina back that would have been nice There are three paths leading away from the clearing. The northern one seems to slope downwards. Would it go north, south or east? So let's see, where are we now? So, um, so I'm trying to cross, there's a river that one has to cross. Um, and If I go east, I get to a place where I'm not sure if I can cross there. I think I have to go... East 118, possibly. Um, so I go east, and that is 218. You can see that ahead of you, two other paths join yours in a small clearing. Uh, you are in clearing 13, this one here. 
If you've been here before or haven't, um, you feel a prickling sensation around your brass ring. Looking down, you see dozens of small scorpions scuttling towards you. Test your luck. My luck is uh, now 10, and I roll against 10, and I roll 6, so my luck is down to 9, and I was lucky. Uh, and I turn to 70. Your reactions are quick. You have time to decide how to deal with the scorpions. Will you stamp on them and strike with your sword, cast a fire spell, or leap over them to safety? Now, this is perhaps where I should use one of my fire spells. Um, I'll try a fire spell, see how that works. It tends to work quite well with arachnids. So. You know that the only magic likely to help you against the crawling multitude is a fire spell. Quickly you cast it. A ring of fire blooms in the grass around your feet. It spreads for a moment and then goes out, but the scorpions have been driven back. You dash out of the clearing before they can attack you again. Turn to 319, so that works rather well. Um, 319 is there. Okay, so I go to 319. Hurriedly, you choose an exit. Would it go north, east, or west? So, um... Let's see, where are we now? So west, that's back where I came from. East, 47, is up here. And... Okay. I still don't know exactly where I'm supposed to go to find something else that I haven't seen before. There's a path up there I haven't been yet. Um, North, that's where the bridge is. Uh, I know I'm supposed to pass the bridge at some point. So I will probably, in that case, go and go north. So I'll go north from here, go to 138. Ahead of you, there is an opening in the trees. You investigate. You are in clearing 35. You can see the white foul brood river running east and west. A great stone bridge crosses the river. It looks totally deserted. If you go onto the bridge, turn to 101. If you distrust the bridge and would rather turn around, turn to 45. I think the bridge is okay, so I'm going to go across the bridge. The bridge is old, but in good repair. If you choose to travel north, turn to 350. If you'd rather go south, turn to 118. So, um, last time I crossed the bridge and then I went, uh, well, north, obviously, because <laughs> that's where I came from. I'm still not used to this going possibility of going back and forth. I sort of, every time I go to a new paragraph, I'm thinking that all the options available to me are places I haven't been. So, of course, I'm going north because, yeah, I still want to be on that side of the river. Um, I'm presuming that's where I'm supposed to go now. Because I, I think I've been everywhere on the other side of the river now. I've seen everything there is to see. Um... You are in a clearing where one huge tree rises from the hard bare ground. In the tree is a gigantic nest made of sticks. You are in a clearing 16. Uh, you stop to look at the great nest. Then you hear a rushing of wings behind you. A huge eagle is hovering over the clearing, watching you. Do you have some parrot feathers? A silver bird amulet? Or neither of these? Oh, excuse me. I presume that to get parrot feathers somewhere else, I often still have, don't know where you can find those, and also a bird amulet that would be from the Master of Birds, or which I, who I also haven't seen, um, possibly the Mistress of Birds. I think that might be a female, actually, for some reason. Um, but I still haven't seen her or him, um, regardless. So I've got neither of those, and I go to 233. After take, drinking some more water. The eagle lands on a branch of the tree and watches you. Its gaze is fierce and its great hooked beak, hooked beak opens and closes threateningly. If you attack it, turn to 392, 
he back away cautiously, turned 25. Well, I don't want to harm the bird, so... Um, well, he might have had something useful, but I'm, I'm going to go and... Well, eagle feathers, I guess. The eagle gives a great cry and circles the clearing once, then it flies to its nest. You are happy to leave it in peace. Turn to 202. Okay, so I'm just... I still don't know if there's anything useful there, for instance, in the nest, but... Um, Maybe I'll check that some other time. You have no reason to linger. You have a choice of three paths. Will you travel south, east, or west? So now I am here. I've gone west before. Uh, south is where I came from. But east is somewhere I haven't been yet. So that's where I will be going. So we are going to 41. Uh -huh. And our videos are rolling, yeah. And our sound is still rolling as well. Good. Back carefully. You enter a flat clearing surrounded by trees covered in ivy. This is clearing 30. 30. If you've been here before, to 382, so I'll just make a little space for that. 382 B for before, that's how I put it on my map. Um, there seems to be nothing of interest here, so you walk towards the other exit when you realize you are sinking into quicksand. Test your luck. And my luck is now 9. I roll 12, so that's a complete fumble. My luck is down to eight. And that's the put here test. Luck. And then we have two options. Um, if you're lucky, you lose two stamina points and turn to 270. Okay, so uh, 270, that's luck. Lucky, stamina minus two, and unlucky, turn to 87, which means whatever happens to me now is worse than losing two stamina points. Right. You are trapped in the quicksand. You can feel yourself being slowly drawn down. Your only hope is to shed your armour. Working quickly, you pull it off and abandon it. Now you can pull yourself out of the quicksand, but you must lose two skill points and reduce your initial skill level by two because you have lost your armor. Okay, so my initial skill level is now basically nine, so it can't go above nine unless I get armor again. And, and of course, that's, those are the same points that I've lost now, so it's nine. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Skill minus. Okay, and then I go to 270. Okay. There are two exits. If you travel north, turn to 275. If you go west, turn to 331. Now, west is here, and I also haven't been there before. Or I may go to north, which is 275. Okay, so north or west. I'll try north. It's nice to be somewhere new now. As you walk along, sorry, my book is a bit high up now. As you walk along, you stumble over a dip in the ground. Looking down, you see that it is actually the half meter footprint of a huge hobnailed boot. You're entering clearing, clearing number seven. Um, rounding the bend, you see a tremendous giant. He looks angry and he brandishes a great spiked club. Your ring is not warning you of evil, but although the giant may not be an evil creature, he is obviously dangerous. He bellows at you. You may not pass. Will you attack him? Try to reason with him or try a magical spell. I'll try a magical spell, I think, but, <coughs> excuse me, um, 
I'll just write it down on my options here first. So we've got one, two, three options. And that is um, 12, attack, 229, reason, or 145, spell. I'm going to try a spell. Also, let me see what my options are. It seems to you that using magic is a pretty good way to deal with an angry giant. Will you try curse, friendship, fire, ice? None of these. So we've got um, one, two, three, and four different options. Some of which sound like they are not very good options. So let's see two curse, friendship, fire. Ice. But I'm going to try a friendship um, spell because that's one of the ones I got from the um, from the unicorn. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so 328 is where I'm going. The giant does not seem such a bad fellow. He is just angry about something. You cast your friendship spell. The giant shakes his head, and then he laughs and tosses his club to the ground. What am I saying? he asks. It's not your fault. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was angry about someone else. What brings you here? If I can help you, I will. Happy that your spell avoided bloodshed, you tell him of your quest. Are you serving Selator, Grimslade? That's the name of the evil guy, Grimslade. See, it sounds like an evil name as well, doesn't it? Or Pumchaka, who sounds a bit like a harlequin or something. Um, I'm serving Selator, so let's see. Um, okay, the friendship, and that brings up three new options. Uh, so 244, Selator, 317, Grim Slade. 103, Poom. Right, so I'm going to 244 since I'm working for Selator. You describe your quest. The giant laughs merrily. It tells you that he saw a bush like that not long ago in a little clearing just to the north. But look out for wolves. Okay, so this is where you actually can get some news out of. Um, using a friendship spell on the Master of Wolves because then he will tell you something that will help you um, sort out the wolves there. So you thank him and bid him good day. Turn to 161. Okay, so uh, we get a hint uh, and we go to 161. 161. You leave the giant's clearing and continue your journey. Which way will you travel? North, south, or west? So we have north, 92, that's north, um, south, 41. Let's see, do we have a 41 down here somewhere now? Yes, there we are. Uh, so that's south. Or west 121 that's over there okay and that is west so I'm going north in that case I'm going to 92 maybe I should um, before I go any further I'm going to use my luck spell bringing my luck back to 11 my skill is still only 9 which is a bit of a shame um, yeah, yeah, just to top it up before I get started now. Uh, I presume I will meet some wolves now. The path leads you northward and gradually upward. The ground around you is somewhat drier now and the swamp trees have been replaced by deep forest. The trees thin out ahead of you. 
and you see a large clearing dotted with low bushes. This is clearing 11. So we got 11. Uh, if you've been here before, turn to 108. So that is 108. Uh, let's see, 108 before. I think I forgot to write the before paragraph in 275. I'll just do that as well, just for. I'll need that. No, that is actually. Yes, 342. There was one. Um, so 342 before. There we are. So I am at 92 still. Um, you stop and listen, but hear nothing. You step out into the clearing to search for more paths. Suddenly you realize that you are being watched by two huge wolves. If you have the wolf amulet, turn to 344. If not, turn to 68. So we have... Uh, so amulet, question mark. So our wolf amulet, I'll put wolf amulet. Um, 344, yes, or 68, no. Okay, I see my map is just out of shot there. Um, so I don't, and I go to 68. If you know a secret word taught you by the Master of Wolves, turn to 302. If not, turn to 215. So we have word. I presume if you have the amulet, uh, they will consider you the Master. Um, or will they? Or will they think that you killed their master? I don't know. But in any case, I also don't have the secret word, which will help now. Um, so 302, yes. Or 215, no. So I don't have the secret word. Um, The wolves growl and spring at you. There is no time to use magic. You swing your sword lustily and strike the first one in mid-leap and cut off its head. Oh my. Its companion circles you warily. You must fight it. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, so it would have been a lot of trouble to go to to get past them without having to fight them, I suppose. But um, So right, so my um, skill is now 9 and my... Yeah, so I don't have a big advantage over them, actually. And my stamina is 15, and uh, the wolf is 7, 6. Okay, so I've got only a 2-point skill advantage as I go into the battle. And he rolls a 6, I roll a 10. He's down to 4 hit points. He rolls a 9, and I roll a 7. That's a draw. He rolls a 6, I roll a 9. He's down to 2 hit points. He rolls an 8, and I roll a 7, so that is the wolf dead. And I'm unscathed, which is quite good. So I kill it and go to 247. See, just wolf 7, 6, and I win, and I go to 247. You search carefully and find nothing of interest except one unusual bush growing near the centre of the clearing. It has dense dark green leaves and white flowers. Near the top of the bush you see one large purple berry. Will you eat the berry? Pick the berry and save it. Ignore it and go back south. I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to pick it and take it with me. Thank you very much. After all, I mean, it's taken me several lives to find it. So, um, my options, let's see, I'll just put them over here, so 20, eat, 232, pick, 342, ignore, okay, so I'm going to pick it, and go to 232, Carefully remove the berry from the bush and put it in your pack. If you are serving Selator, turn to 389. Otherwise, you leave the clearing and turn southward again. So, um, okay, so Selator, question mark, and then we go to 389. 
just reminding me to go back to him now probably let's see what you have no doubt from Sedator's description that you have found the Antherica plant. Half your mission is completed. Now you must return to the village with the precious berry. The only path leads back to the south. Turn to 342. And I might still fail on the way back because I'm not that strong. I've got one stamina spell left, one fire spell, a red cloak, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Um, so... Um, I'm going 342. Yes, I know the way now. I think. If I can read my own map. You recognize the clearing where you met the mighty giant. If you killed the giant, turn to 197. If you did not kill him, turn to 300. So I did not kill him. Let's see. So 342. Where are we now? Ah, yes. That's actually the same as this one here. So just to start, start. Okay. Um, so one ninety seven killed or three hundred not. Okay, I did not kill him, but we did leave his friend, so hopefully that will count for something. There is no sign of the huge giant. He must have left. You continue your journey. Turn to 161. So 161 is... 161 anywhere here? No, no, there's no 161. I'll put that up here. Oops. 161. Just to make my map even more confusing. You leave the giant's clearing and continue your journey. Which way will you travel? So, um, south, that is where the quicksand is, but now I know about the quicksand, so surely I should be able to avoid it. Otherwise, I could go west, where I haven't been. I'm going to go past the quicksand again. I think I'll hopefully I'll be able to know how to deal with it now that I know that it's there. Uh, you enter a flat clearing surrounded by trees covered in ivy. Um, and I, I've been here before, so I go to 382. You realize you are in the clearing with a pool of quicksand. You will not blunder into it unprepared this time. You have thought of several things you can do. If you use an ice spell, you can freeze the quicksand and walk across, but the ice will quickly melt behind you. If you use a growth spell, you can make the vines around the pool grow and give you a safe path, but now and at any time you return to this clearing, if you have either of these spells, you can use it to cross safely. If you have neither of these spells, will you so growth or ice? Uh, of course, I don't have any of those. Um... Try to jump across or turn and take another path. I'm going to try to jump across. Um, so this is, let's see, um, 270 or jump 190. So jump or I don't know what I call the other, the other one, other stuff. I call that. Um, so I'm going to. Also, there's 223, take another path, uh, 223, other path, okay. So I'm going to try to jump. Hopefully that will use stamina, which means I would be successful. Or use his luck in this case. You back off and take a running jump, test your luck. So, uh, my luck is uh, 11, so I'm rolling an 8, and my luck is then down to 10, but I was lucky, so, uh, so let's test luck. Uh, and then we turn to 270, so then we are 270, yeah. 
there are two exits if you travel north uh, yeah so i'm going west because uh, north is where i came from so we're going 331 that is down there and uh, north 275 so that is up there right and this is why this map gets so convoluted is because you get arrows going in both directions um you are back in the clearing where the great eagle nested. All you see is the old tree and the nest. If you fought the eagle, turn to 202. If you did not fight the eagle, turn to 112. Okay, so... Um, so 202... Fought or 112. No fight. So I did not fight the eagle, so I got 112. You are curious about the great nest. If you would like to climb up and examine it, turn to 73. If you would rather leave, turn to 202. Ah, so it is possible to examine the nest. So, um, so 73, nest or leave 202. I'll examine the nest while I'm here. Test your luck. Okay, so luck is 10, I roll seven. Okay. If you're lucky, you get to the nest safely. Looped about one of the branches, you find a heavy gold chain, whatever good that does. Um, so gold chain, well at least I've got it. Uh, you may take it if you wish. You climb down and leave, turn to 202. So we are going to 202. You have no reason to linger. You have a choice of three paths. Will you travel south, east or west? So we have... Um, I am trying to get back, so that means going south to 138. Ahead of you there is an opening in the trees. You investigate. You are in clearing 35. You can see the white Falbrood River running east and west. A great stone bridge crosses the river. It looks totally deserted. If you go onto the bridge, turn to 101. Yes, I do. The bridge is old, but in good repair. If you choose to travel north, no, I'm, that's where I'm coming from now. So I want to go south, and I go to 118. After a little drink. You can see that ahead of you, two other paths join yours in a small clearing. Um, if you've been here before, turn to 303. Yeah, I've been here before. So 303. You have returned to the clearing where you met the horde of scorpions. You look around anxiously to see whether they are still about. Yes, there they are, <laughs> coming towards you from all sides. You are ready for them this time. Turn to 70. So, um, where are we now? So we're going down here, the bridge, uh, 303. And then you go to 70, which is the same as the successful luck roll the first time when you test your luck, it looks right. So, um, okay. Your reactions are quick. You have time to decide how to deal with the scorpions. So I can't cast a fire spell. Um, oh, hang on. I've still got a fire spell left. No, I don't, because I used one on the trees, didn't I? And then one on the scorpions. Yes, yeah, so I've used all my fire spells. All I've got left is one stamina spell, which I'll need soon. Okay, so I can't cast a fire spell on them. I could leap over them to safety. Or stamp on them and strike with my sword. I don't want to leap... I want to stamp on them and strike with my sword, I think. So, 216. That's okay, isn't it? Actually, I've tried doing that before. There are too many of them for you to fight. They swarm onto your boots and up your trousers and begin to sting you. 
roll one die and lose that many points of stamina. Okay, that's a bit risky. Five. Okay, stamina 10. So I'm going to use my last stamina spell and bring it back up to 18. Um, and then we get here stamina minus 1d6. One six sided die. There we are. Um, angrily, you leap over the rest of the scorpions and leave the clearing turn to 319. Okay, so 319, that is there. Right. So far, so good. Still not out of the woods yet, or out of the swamp in this case. Hurriedly you choose an exit. Will you go north, east, or west? So from here I need to go um, back west. Is it not west? I'm going from here. Yes. I'm going west and I'm going to 66. You enter a rather pleasant glade surrounded by gnarled oaks. You are in clearing nine. If you've been here before, I have. I turn to 192. Uh, yes, 192. You are back in the clearing where you met the thief. If you did not kill the thief, turn to 267. So we have, uh, let's see, killed, question mark. And then it's 267. That means you have to fight him if you haven't killed him before. If you did kill him, turn to 179, which is also a paragraph I've been to before. Um, there are three paths leading away from the clearing. The northern one seems to slope downwards. Will you go north, south, or east? So I am going um, north, I believe, is the way back now. Because the other way, did that go back? 10. Where is 10? Um, let's see, south, 10, south, 10, south, 10. Do I have 10 on my map? Is that somewhere I have not been? 10 is over there. Okay, so 10 is actually Yes, yeah, so I can go south and go to paragraph 10. The knotted trees give way before you and you have entered clearing, entered another clearing. This is clearing five. If you've been here before, I have um, turned to 142. So I'll be in there, 142. You see few signs of the earlier battle. The bodies of the orcs have gone. Footlong scorpion glares at you from a pool as you hurry through the clearing. Turn to 227. Okay, so everything's fine there. Um, okay. There are three paths leading out of the clearing. The ones that lead east is somewhat narrower and darker than the others. So, north, east, or west. Now, this is, uh, let's see, I'm all the way down on this map now. So, I am now over here. And I oh, was just in clearing five, and I'm trying to get south. But how do I get south now? Do I go north where I came from? So it's east or west. East is 388, west is 320. Um, 320 is where the unicorn was. Now where is East 388? Where is 388? 388 is down there. I have not been there before. But there's something else going on down there that I don't know about. I'm just going to go where I know I've been now. So I'm going to go west and go to 320. So the path dips slightly downwards and leads you into a grassy clearing. This is clearing 29, and I have been there before, so I go to 265. This is the glade where you met the unicorn, but there is nothing here now. Turn to 348. So this is 265 before, uh, and then you go to 348, which is there. Let's see. So that is, yeah, that's on my map already. Okay. 
There are four exits where they go north, south, east, or west. So I'm trying to get south, aren't I? So I will go south past the trees again. That means I have to fight the sword trees again. Is there a safer way back? I wonder. Just wondering now. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances. I've got luck to use as well. A few points anyway that are quite safe. So I'll go past the sword trees again. Wish me luck. Um, the path narrows menacingly. You wonder for a second if you have reached a dead end. Then it becomes wider again. You step into a very small clearing. You're in clearing 18. And I've been there before and I got to 279. To your dismay, the deadly sword trees have already grown back. If you want to fight with your sword, turn to 28. Yeah, I do, because that's all I've got now. There are several sword trees, etc. Okay, so now I've got a quite an even battle here. So I've got 9 skill and 18 stamina, and the sword trees have got 9 skill and 12 stamina. So this is, can, can get quite hairy, actually, this one. So, right. Okay. Eight. They roll, and I roll six. So I'm down to 16. They roll a nine, and I roll, okay, seven. Down to 14. They roll seven. I roll seven. That's a draw. They roll four. I roll five, and I want to use luck to do extra damage to them. And I, my luck is nine, and I roll ten. That's a shame. That means I've only done one point of damage. They roll nine. I roll nine. That's a draw. They roll nine. I roll six. I'm down to twelve hit points. They roll 10. I roll 9. I'm down to 10 hit points. At this point they've got the biggest chance of winning. They roll 8. I roll 4. I'm down to 8. They roll 11. I roll 7. I'm down to 6 hit points. They roll 8 again and I roll 8. That's a draw. They roll seven, and I roll eight, they're down to nine hit points. Uh, I'll try using luck again, and nine, no, failed again, so they got ten, and I probably shouldn't use luck again for that. Um, they roll six, I roll six, that's a draw, they roll eight. I roll six, I'm down to four hit points. Oops. They roll three, and I roll six. They're down to eight. They roll 11, and I roll 10. I'm down to two hit points. Okay, I'll take my chances and try to use luck to reduce that. So I've got seven luck and I roll eight. So again, so that means I've got one hit point left. But I didn't really have anything to lose there because if I made it, I mean, I've one more hit to kill me anyway. I need to hit them four times. They need to not hit me a single time for me to win this. So they roll a six and I roll a nine. So it's down to six hit points. They roll a 10 and I roll five and I am dead. The sword trees are really nasty and they win the day again. I should probably save my, um, I don't know, well the fire spell doesn't really make much of a difference does it? It's really not uh, the quicksand that killed me today because it reduced my skill. So but the thing now is that basically um, the thing is now if I'm going to use, do the same mission again which is the one I'm trying to accomplish I will be doing exactly the same thing over and over again so maybe I should just continue for now and pretend that I win this one 
um, because um, just to get to the excuse me the end of the game um, because I would manage to do it at some point but doing the same thing over and over again will get a bit boring so um, so I'm gonna go to um, let's see 362 and pretend that I won that one so I'm not gonna do another episode trying to do the same thing now so um, so I win and I go to 22 I just want to see the end now as well. So, so even as you pocket the seed, you see new growth stirring at the base of the trees. You leave quickly while you go north, south, or west. So I am going um, south, I believe. Ninety. You have crossed several shallow streams, but now you're faced with a deeper one. So I'll have to wade across because I don't have any more freeze spells. So You are not attacked as you wade across, but when you reach the other side, you are disgusted to find several large leeches on your legs. Um, roll two dice and lose as many stamina points as shown on the lower of the two. So I'll lose three stamina points. I'm not going to count that anymore. Um, you may travel north or south, so I'm trying to travel south and go to 398. You enter a medium-sized clearing, etc, etc. I've been here before and I go to 239. You are in the clearing of the Master of Wolves. The hut is locked tightly and there is no sign of anyone. Turn to 314. You have two choices. If you go north, turn to 90. If you go east, turn to 195. So I'm going to go east and go to 195. Clearing one. Um, if you want to step carefully across to another trail, turn to 58. If you want to jump, turn to 91. Of course, if I'd had uh, that little stamina, I would not try to jump. I would try to step carefully across. I'll just step carefully across. Um, Test your luck and uh, don't make that, um, which means I would have got one less stamina point. And I go south and I go to 208. It seems to become lighter as you walk along. Through the trees above you, you suddenly catch a glimpse of blue sky. A few minutes later, you see an opening in the trees and when you step through, you realize that you have left the swamp. You may retrace your steps and walk back the way you came until you reach the first clearing. Turn to 195. If you're ready to return and report the outcome of your quest, turn to 159. So I'm going to imagine I'm alive for the moment and go back and report my success. You feel that you have done all you can. Now you must return to your patron and report your success or your failure. Did you undertake your quest for Selator, Grimslade or Pumchaka? Selator, in this case, and I'm going to go to 6. You return to Selator's hut. A merry fire is crackling in the kitchen and something is cooking that smells delicious. He greets you warmly and asks, have you got the berry? If you have got the purple berry of the Antherica plant, turn to 175. If not, turn to 52. So, um, 175, I've got the berry. You reach carefully into a pocket and removes the gleaming berry. Oh, wonderful, the old man cries, overjoyed. He plucks it from your hand and carries it out into his garden. Placing it gently in the ground, he begins to hum a spell. Almost instantly, a small plant sprouts and grows into a vigorous bush like the one which you saw in the swamp. Blossoms open, filling the air with fragrance and clusters of purple berries form. Senator plants some of the new berries and they in turn begin to sprout. It's almost like planting things in a, in a, in a game, isn't it? You don't have to wait long, usually. Um, then he looks up at you. I'm so sorry, he says. I was so happy that I forgot for a moment that you were here. Now these bushes will grow up and I'll send carrier birds to my fellow wizards with lots of berries. Soon everyone will have Antherica again and honour you for it. You have done a great deed this day. He offers you healing potions and a hot meal, and you accept gratefully. Over dinner you speak of many things, both great and small. Then you are on your way again, feeling well and happy. 
you have succeeded in your quest except i failed of course but yes uh, i would have succeeded eventually um once i know the path now it's really a matter of or oh, path that i think is the best i'm not 100 percent sure because my map is so messy um it's just a matter of rolling the dice over and over again and um and that's not so much fun as reading it and trying to find the path the first time. Now, of course, the interesting thing about this book now, um, I'm considering myself done with this for the moment, uh, is that there are two more two more quests you can go on. I just want to check those now because I haven't had a look at them. So just to see what they are. I've had some theories, of course. Grimslade, the evil wizard. So if you want to go to Grimslade and, and get a quest from him, this is what happens. Grimslade lives by himself in a tower very near the swamp. When you ask for directions, no one wants to talk to you. One old lady makes the sign of the evil eye at you and the young girl flees. Eventually a skinny ruffian in the marketplace gives you directions and you set off to meet the wizard, whom everyone fears. As soon as you see his tower, your brass ring begins to get hot. Grimslade is evil, very evil indeed. The feeling grows stronger as you approach a dark, jagged tower with its strange arches and its gruesome statuary. If you go on up to the door, turn to 40. If you turn back and return to the village, turn to 139. So you've got an option of going back as well. So I'm going to go up to the tower. You control your fear and approach the gloomy tower. Bats circle around the upper story. As you step towards the great iron door, you see a hideous face sculpted on it. Then the door swings open before you. Grimslade, Grimslade stands waiting. He is tall and skeletally thin. The crimson designs on his black robe seem to glow. He greets you pleasantly, but your ring, hot in your finger, continues to warn you that you are in the presence of evil. I know all about you, he says. You want to explore the swamp. That meddling fool Grona sent you here. But what makes you think you are worthy of my time? I need a hero who is afraid of nothing. Will you challenge him to a combat? Explain that you are a hardy warrior and that your magic ring will prevent you from losing your whale. Way, smile and say that you fear nothing. I'm not going to tell him about my ring. I think he wants to steal it. So I'm going to smile and say that you fear nothing. And go to 97. Fine, he replies, smiling. You see that his teeth are pointed. He waves his hand at the wall where a statue of a goblin is standing. It quivers and moves towards you, brandishing a stone sword. If you want to run away, turn to 315. If you choose to fight the statue, turn to 284. So you'd have to fight the statue as well to prove yourself to Grimslade, apparently. As the sorcerer laughs, his stony creature shuffles towards you. You realise that your sword will be of little use against a creature made of living rock. Thinking quickly, you bring your sword down on the wizard's table instead. Your blade cleaves the wood, cutting off one of the table's legs. You scoop up the improvised club, dropping your sword, and face the statue with this much more appropriate weapon. Grimslade, impressed by your strength and quick wits, has stopped his evil laughter and watches attentively as you fight. Attentively, even. Um... So, a goblin statue, skill 7, stamina 6, so that's what you have to fight, it's not too difficult. If you destroy the statue, turn to 156, I'll just go there and see, I still need to know what the actual mission is. You are breathing heavily, but you're still alive. Your opponent has been reduced to a heap of gravel, which is scattered over the floor. You laugh at Grimslade and toss a table leg over, over your shoulder. It lands with a thump amid the remains of a bookcase knocked over in the fight. Grimslade is eyeing the wreckage of his parlour. If you were not wounded in the fight, turn to 241. If you were wounded but lost 5 or less stamina points, turn to 193, etc. I'm just going to say I wasn't wounded at all. Um, Grimslade is impressed with you. He claps you on the back. You're the one I've been looking for, truly. Come with me and we shall discuss how we can make ourselves rich. But first, here's a gift. He reaches into his robes and withdraws a miniature sword, which grows... Oh, I just remembered I forgot to give myself the two extra luck points in the beginning, which might have saved me, actually. Anyway, 
So I'm, I'm actually, if I had two more lock points, I may well actually I made this through because the lock was quite critical uh, a few times. Um, but now I don't know. I wouldn't know. So anyway, I should have had two more lock points. So he uh, withdraws a miniature sword which grows to full size when he hands it to you. It is a magic sword. Add one to your skill whenever you use it. As you examine the sword, Grimstead touches you with his wand. If you had used up any luck during your fight, it is now back to its initial level. Turn to 206. Okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> you are seated in Grimslade's study. An ornate mirror hangs on one wall. At least, it looks like a mirror, but the scene it shows is constantly changing. The walls are covered with dusty shelves, full of huge books, odd-looking bottles, strange objects that might be mummified animals and other weird objects. Um, I'm a collector, Grimstead tells you, of knowledge and artefacts. Not long ago, something strange happened. Several wizards moved into Scorpion Swamp, wizards whom I know nothing about. Their powers are great but limited, and they seem to be involved with nature. One I know controls wolves, another seems to be a master of plants. My mirror cannot get a clear view of the swamp, but I have spied on them as much as I could. The powers seem to come from the silver amulets they wear. Well, what exactly do you want me to do, you ask? And what will you pay me? He replies, I want those amulets. I want at least three of them. If you can get more, so much the better. I don't care how you get them. I will pay you 500 gold pieces for each one you bring back. And what magical aid can you give me, you ask? Grimsley laughs. I can make you a wizard. Well, almost. I will give you six enchanted spell gems. No more. But that should be enough to see you through, considering the sword arm you've shown me. You talk with Grimsley about the spell you will use, spells you will use, and refer to the magic spell list in front, etc. You must pick from the evil and neutral spells. Um, okay, so you get plus one skill, and you have to get three of the amulets, which is sort of similar thing to what I thought might be the case. Now, what about Pumchak? Oh, that's the last one. So. Um, So what's the last mission you can get? Grona tells you to seek out Pumchaker in the village market. As soon as you enter the tangle of streets and shops, you are lost. You keep getting lost in this town and you got the magical ring that shows you the way. <laughs> what's up with that? Um, you will never get lost with that ring, according to the backstory. Anyway, um, eventually a group of laughing young boys escorts you to a large house on the edge of the market. You uh, knock on the door and it is answered by a goblin. Not a goblin warrior like those whom you have fought, but a goblin serving, serving girl. She escorts you to a library where Pumchaka sits. He is one of the oddest men you have ever seen. Very tall and immensely fat. With an elaborately braided beard and bright red skin. You tell him your story and ask if he is looking for someone like you. Yes, I am, he rumbles. But what makes you think you can live in Scorpion Swamp and so many others have died there? If you tell him about the old woman and the powers of the brass ring you were at, turn to two. If you simply smile and say you are a skilled fighter, turn to 173. Shall I tell him about the ring? I'll tell him about the ring, see what happens. He is fascinated by your story. Rising heavily to his feet, he walks to a small table on which a globe is standing. He spins the globe and it opens, revealing a pile of gold coins. Pumchaka smiles as your eyes bulge. Will you sell it to me? he asks. I will give you a hundred pieces of fine gold. No, of course not. Um... He gives a deep rumbling laugh and you are certain that you see the bookshelves quiver. He is not at all, at all offended by your reticence. In fact, he is now convinced that you are the fighter he needs. I will tell you my secret, he explains. I am not a wizard at all, but merely a merchant from another land. I have bought many powerful spells and artifacts. Thus, people believe that I am a mighty magician, and I let them think so, because they treat me with more respect. You ask what Poomchucker wants in Scorpion Swamp. Information, he replies. If I had a map of the path through the swamp, I could send caravans through and save weeks and weeks of time in my trading. If you can bring me a map showing a clear path to the town of Willowbend on the north side of Scorpion Swamp, I will pay you half the money that I saved during the first year. 
You realize that this could amount to hundreds of gold pieces, but you are still wisely cautious. If you are not a wizard, what magic can you give me to help me survive the swamp, you ask? He laughs deeply. I told you that I buy many magic spells. Each of these gems here will let you cast one spell. He spills a box of glittering gems onto the table. You may pick any five to take. I do not think you should need that many, but I am generous. Um, so, And then you may choose only from the neutral list of spells. Okay. You shake hands with Pumtracker. His grip is surprisingly strong and the Goblin Girl takes you downstairs. You walk through the busy market and across Fenmarge towards the swamp. The quest is this. Find your way north across the swamp to the town of Willowbend and return to Pumtraka with a map. Right, so I found Willowbend last time. So, so those are the three missions um, in Scorpion Swamp. So it is either to find the Antherica Berry, which actually turned out to be quite tricky. Um, you get three amulets from the Masters, which actually might be easier, I think. Um, but of course it is evil. Uh, and thirdly, it would be to um, to find a way to Willowbend and back, which also would be reasonably easy, but sort of on the same on par with the Antherica Bush Berry, I believe. So those are the three missions you can take, and of course you can play it at different times and do different missions, and it has some replayability. But of course, once you have the map of the swamp, every mission becomes reasonably. Uh, more easy to do and so um, sort of the replayability isn't as great as it otherwise could have been. Um, it just gives you a different emphasis if you want to play again. So um, yes, so that's it for the moment. Um, so that's my, my joint jaunt into Scorpion Swamp done. I might actually have been able to survive this if I'd remember that I had two more luck points to start with. Um, which also means that when I used my lock spell, I would have regained two more points as well, um, for instance. Because um, my luck would have been 13. So by the time it was 8, it should have been 10. And it was down to, to 6 again. And I did miss some of the luck rolls, but just one point. So um, that's a bit of a shame, because it would have been really fun if I just made it with, with that luck score, and I could have done. So anyway. And also... Yeah, well, I wouldn't have made the... Um... I can't remember what I rolled when I went to the quicksand. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. Um, I'm not going to agonise over the what-ifs uh, of having remembered to have more luck than I did. Um, at least I had a great time playing the book, and I hope you had a nice time watching this as well. Um, I think I'll move on to the next book next time. I'm not going to keep playing this over and over. I've been practically everywhere. Not everywhere. There's still I haven't seen the Master and or Mistress of Birds. Um, there's still a few locations up north I've not been to, um, but very few actually. And so I've seen most of Scorpion Swamp now. So uh, next time, I'm not doing book number nine next time. This is book number eight, of course, because I've done book number nine before. That's one of the earliest ones I did when I started doing fighting fantasy. I just picked this at random before I decided to um, to do them in order. So next book up is number 10, which I'm sure lots of people are looking forward to because that is Steve Jackson's House of Hell. And that's of course UK Steve Jackson, not American Steve Jackson who wrote Scorpion Swamp. And this is going to be very exciting because I've not played this one before and people do keep talking about it like it's quite a challenge and got a good atmosphere, etc. So I'm really um, intrigued to see how this is going to go when I get to it. Um, it's got a nice bit of pattern on this book. You've got a fold on, in the middle of the front page where somebody has been doing this for some reason. Um, so this is definitely a reading copy, and um, this is the second reprint from 1985. And it will be really interesting to see how this is. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to a horror kind of setting now. Because I've done sci-fi, I've done fantasy, obviously, and uh, yeah, just something a little bit more hammer horror style, I guess. Um, just need Christopher Lee and it'll be perfect. Anyway, so that's next time. Uh, I don't know when next time will be because my work schedule is a little bit 
all over the place these days. And uh, as you may have noticed, if you are subscribing to this channel, I actually have had more time to do this sort of smaller music related videos um, because making a fighting fantasy video means that I have to a lot sort of two to three hours of available time to do it. Um, whereas if I do anything else, um, anything to do with music, I just need one hour available to me and it's a lot easier to do. And also I can do it when someone else is in the house because um, I don't need it to be quiet for the voice recording. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience if you followed my journey into Scorpion Swamp all the way through from the beginning, from episode one even. Um, I think this is my fighting fantasy video number, roughly number 50 now actually. I think I'm up to 50. So I've been doing quite a few now. And uh, next one. House of Hell, and I'll see you there. So goodbye for now, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.